This is my work computer setup, my personal computer setup, and the gaming setup all in one photo. It's nothing fancy, but one thing I want to accomplish in this video is getting both monitors on the same desk and wall mounted. I found some setups I liked on YouTube, then searched Amazon for similar mounts. I landed on the Hueno dual monitor wall mount, priced at $69.99 with over 2,000 ratings and an average 4.5 stars. But even better, there was used options for as low as 28, which I jumped all over. In this video, I'll go over the install and my thoughts on the product, as well as, spoiler alert, my struggles buying used on Amazon. I want to say this straight out the gate. Do not buy a mount used on Amazon. I decided to buy used because the description said the condition was very good, and I was saving 30 bucks. But this decision caused me hours of extra work, and it was not worth it. I'll go into more details later, but the issues I ran into were... The package arrived with more tape than box. The arms were duct taped together, which left this residue that took a whole lot of elbow grease to remove. And it was missing a lot, and I mean a lot of the hardware. It had about half of what it was supposed to have, which led me to multiple trips to the hardware store to try to salvage all the work I'd put into up to the point that I realized it. The X's here show which parts were missing, but the biggest issue was it was shipped with two different brackets, one of which didn't even go with this unit. So continue watching to see how I was able to overcome this issue. The unboxing was interesting to say the least. This is the first time I've bought something off Amazon and been extremely disappointed. Usually you get like new items even when it's labeled as fair. But like I mentioned earlier, this was labeled as very good. But I think they meant to say very good chance it was hit by a Scud missile. But as you can see here, these are the items that it did include. Now what I should have done is added more tape to that box and then sent it back, but I'm not one to shy away from a challenge, so let's see what we can do. First, we have to get this duct tape off the arms. If you ever have something that's got that stubborn tape residue on it that's very difficult to remove, get you some Goo Gone. It smells like funny car gas, but works extremely well. Next, we need a layout where to put the wall mount. To get the layout, first we need to clean up a bit, then find our stud. Use a stud finder to find the edge of each side of the stud. We want the bolt to be dead center in the stud so that we get a good hold. The location of the studs will dictate where the mount can be placed. Also measure the center of the wall and the center of the desk and it just so happened to land right on a stud. If you have zero experience with wall mounts, it's hard to envision how high it should be, or if center is the perfect location when compared to the right side or the left side. Since it is so heavy and has to be mounted, you can't really test it out. I measured eye level from a seating position, and then also did center on the monitor, and I think I'll give that a try. Once I found where I wanted the center of the monitor, I marked that on the wall. Then I placed the mount on the wall until the arms locations were at the location of that mark. Once there, I marked the mounting holes. Since the arms do move up and down, I could have went up another 6 to 12 inches and still been okay, but you don't really know that if this is your first time. Now it's time to install the wall mount. The instructions said to use the template to pre-drill three 5-30-second pilot holes no less than 2 and 3 quarters inch deep. But I figured it'd be easier to pre-drill one hole, secure the mount to the wall with one bolt, level it, then pre-drill and drive the remaining bolts. This is an 11 millimeter socket. And these are quarter inch, two and three sixteenth inch lag screws. Now with one lag in there, I can pivot until it's level and then drill the remaining pilot holes. And there we are. Supposed to have three of these lags. I got two. I was hoping two would be enough, but it did start moving on me later on. To be honest, I hadn't even looked at the back of these monitors to see if they had mounting holes. Most do, as that's pretty standard. But first, I have to remove these stands. All monitors are a little bit different, but this one requires you stick a pin into the hole to push in the release. I used the flat side of a drill bit to get this done. This thing slides in here. That'll stop it. Okay. I need these little ones. Come in thread. 
gauge me at least five turns. The mount does come with two different size milling screws for your monitors, a short one and a long one. It's supposed to have eight of each, but my used version only had four of each. For this one, I used four small screws and four washers. This bolt acts as kind of like a set screw. Once it's in there, the monitor will not come off the bracket, which will allow you to turn it sideways if you want that orientation. Now this stand comes off a little bit easier. This is where things started to take a turn for the worst. You have to use spacers with curved monitors. The mount was supposed to come with eight, but only had three correct size spacers and a random extra. But using a nut and a few washers allowed me to get the four spacers. So let's see how that works. The four spacers brought the bracket out of the indentation perfectly, so so far so good. And another issue, the long screws appear to need a spacer on the other side too. I'm out of nuts and washers and spacers, so let's go to Lowe's and see if they have any. And here are some spacers, so we got that out of the way, and here is a quarter inch lag that is a little bit longer than the ones that came with the mount, but it should work. Here I'm removing the long machine screw and adding the new spacer. That means that each hole is going to get two spacers, a washer, and the long machine screw. Alright, we got both brackets installed. Now let's install this third lag. Now we have three lags holding the mount in place, making it rock solid. And we're somewhat level and have both brackets on the monitors. We should be close to wrapping this thing up, or so I thought. I spent an insane amount of time trying to get this monitor on the bracket. I tried switching to the other side. I thought I was going crazy. It just would not fit. But then I looked at the two mounts. They were not the same. Is it possible somebody put a different mount in this box and sold it to me? After taking a closer look at the brackets, yeah that's possible because one has a curved edge and the other one is not curved, which means they are totally different brackets. And looking in the manual, the bracket picture in the manual is the one with the curve on it. And after measuring both, they were different sizes. That's the 3 sixteenths difference between that bracket and that bracket. At this point, I almost gave up and was seriously debating sending this thing back, but I'd put so much time into it, I figured I'd try to use the angle grinder to remove that 3 16 and see if we can make it work. And to my surprise, after grinding away for about 20 minutes, this thing finally slid on. And this is what it looks like afterwards, and actually it doesn't look all that bad. You can definitely tell where I removed some from this side, and my main fear was accidentally nicking that little lip at the bottom, because that is what holds the bracket on, but everything worked out perfect. And there were small pieces of metal all over everything. Hmm. This is the finished product. I do have some wire management issues to work through, and I'm also going to paint this desk in a future video, but for this project, we are finished. Now I'll give you my thoughts on this mount while a few other customer views flip through in the background. I wanted to crap on it because of all the trouble I had on the install, but after using it for a few weeks, I'm actually really happy with it. Getting the monitors off the desk has freed up a lot of workspace, allowing for a much cleaner looking setup. 
Buying used was my fault for wanting to be so cheap, so the only suggestion I have for you is to buy new and you should be happy with it. I'll leave a link to this unit in the description. If you end up getting one, leave me a comment and let me know what you think about it, good or bad. But anyways, thanks and I will see you guys on the next one.